Hey all, I'm Apoorva and welcome back to Vedasified. I hope you watched our previous videos in which we discussed about how to fill the DS-160 form step by step. In this video, we are going to talk about the questions most people get while filling this DS-160 form, the common mistakes you make and how to correct them. If you're currently filling or planning to fill the DS-160 form, then you must watch this video to not make those mistakes. So let's get to it. But before that, if you find our content helpful, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your every like, comment and subscription really motivates us to keep making these useful videos. So subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon right now. DS-160 is very important component of your visa application and you should make no mistakes while filling it. If you haven't watched our previous video on how to fill the DS-160, then you should watch that first and then come back to this video. In this video as well, we will go over the DS-160 form from the beginning, but we will only be talking about those fields or sections where most people get confused or make mistakes. In the end, we will also answer some of the questions you asked in the comments section of the previous video and show you how to correct the DS-160 if you made a mistake. So make sure to watch this video until the very end. First of all, let's discuss when should we start filling the DS-160 form. All you need to fill DS-160 is your I-20 and passport and maybe a resume. So you can start the process as soon as you get the I-20 from the college you want to attend. The form is very long, so there is a good chance that you may not be able to complete it on the same day. Not that it takes more than a day to complete, but sometimes you may be missing some information that you want to double check or don't have enough time to go through the form all at once. So it is important to start filling it as soon as possible so that you can complete it early because you need the DS-160 confirmation number to book your visa appointment. I am sure you all know how difficult it is to find a good visa slot. So you have to act fast. The first thing you do while filling your DS-160 is select the consulate. And the question most people get here is what if I want to choose another consulate for my visa interview? Like I want to attend the visa interview at Mumbai consulate, but the only slots that are available for the dates I want are in Chennai consulate. Or I have my biometrics appointment at Delhi, but my visa interview is in Hyderabad. So in these cases, which consulate should I choose for this DS-160? The answer is, it doesn't matter. You can choose any consulate here and book the slots for a different consulate based on the availability. You don't have to update this location. Embassy has a central database, so they can access your DS-160 form from any consulate. Most people choose the nearest consulate to their residence, so you can do that as well. We already talked about how important it is to note the application ID. So this is how we can retrieve the application. Click the Retrieve an Application button here, enter the application ID and answer the security questions. You can retrieve the saved application. This is handy because like we said, the form is lengthy and it kicks you out after every 20 minutes. Believe me, it is very annoying. If you are on page 4 and it logged you out, but you saved only page 1, then you have to restart from page 1. So remember to save your progress after every page. Think of it like a checkpoint in the video games. We have already talked about this missing names in the previous video. If your passport has only one name, then write it in the surnames field and write FNU in the given name field. FNU means first name unknown. Next thing is the intended length of stay. Many people make mistake here and write the duration as 5 years for master's students or 6 to 7 years for bachelor's including the OPT and the STEM extension. But it's always better to go by what is mentioned on the I-20. You can find the program start date and the end date on the I-20 and you can calculate the duration. The next important thing is who is paying for your trip. The option you choose here should be in line with what you would tell the visa officer and you can show sufficient proofs. If you say self here and on the interview day if you tell your parents or some other relative is sponsoring you, then the officer may doubt your intentions. So you have to be consistent. If you have multiple sponsors, then you can go with whoever is sponsoring majority of the funds. If it's an education loan on your name, then you can choose self. Many people were worried about this social media presence information when it was first introduced a couple of years back. But over the years, people realized that it is not a game changer. Unless you have very extremist ideas or something that can be defined as illegal posted on your social media, which I hope is not the case, you have nothing to worry about. You can clean up if you have any doubts about any of your posts or tweets. You don't have to mention every single account you ever created 
just the ones that you are currently using. When you are providing reasons for your stolen or lost passport or if you are mentioning your job duties, present them clearly and to the point. Don't just write one sentence answers, explain them enough to make the visa officer understand the situation clearly. Another mistake people do is, here at the US point of contact, they mention a relative's name and when they ask if you have any relatives in the US in the next pages, they say no. It is conflicting information and the officer can think that you are lying. It is always recommended to write the name mentioned on your I-20 as a school contact or the HR contact for the H-1B people because they have all the necessary information about you if the visa officer or the USCIS wants to contact them later. For visitors, you can mention your relative's details. Next commonly asked question is about the primary occupation. If you are currently studying, then you can choose student. If you are working in any of these fields, then you can choose accordingly. If you were working and left the job or would leave the job by the visa interview time, then you can choose not employed. If you graduated and not an active student, then you can choose unemployed or other and explain. Next, I am going to answer some of the questions you asked us in the comment section of the previous video. For the education information, you have to enter details starting from the secondary education, which means your 10th, 12th and above. Internships you do while pursuing your course need not be considered as employments. You don't have to upload and get any pictures taken for the DS-160. They will do it at the biometrics appointment. There is no fees especially for the DS-160. You will have to pay the visa application fee, but that's different. The signature at the end is a digital signature, which means that you can just type. There is no need of any touchscreen or anything. These are the most common mistakes or the frequently asked questions while filling the DS-160. But what if you have already submitted the DS-160 and realized later that you have made a mistake? If you have realized that you have made a mistake after you submitted the DS-160 form, then you don't have to fill the new form again. You can retrieve the existing form and edit it. The DS-160 form stays in the database for 30 days, so you can use the application ID and retrieve it. If it's over 30 days, then you have to fill a new form. If you have not booked the visa appointment yet, then you can discard the old form and use the confirmation number from the new form. If you have already booked the visa appointment, then you can edit your US travel doc profile and update the DS-160 confirmation number and use the new form. If you are not able to edit the profile or if it's very close to your interview date, then you can print and take both the old and new DS-160 forms and tell the interview officer accordingly. It's always a good idea to take the old and new forms whenever you make an edit. So if the visa officer asks, you are well prepared. So that's all we have for this video. In the next video, we will talk about the visa application and the interview process. Hope this video helped you to understand everything about the DS-160 form. If you haven't watched our previous videos, then go watch them now. If you still have any questions, then you can ask us in the comment section below. We will reply and make more videos answering all your questions. If you find this video useful, then please like and share it. See you in the next video. Until then, take care, keep learning. Bye-bye.